Just gone 8 13 in Paris, which is we, where we head next on today's Globalist. Because having secured a convincing win in France's presidential elections, Emmanuel Macron has run into a lot more trouble in this weekend's legislative votes. All 577 seats in the Assemblée Nationale are open for renewal this month. President Emmanuel Macron's coalition needs to reach a threshold of 289 to win a majority. Last night... That proved much harder to achieve in the first of two rounds of legislative elections. Well, joining me now from Paris is the AFP journalist Florence Biedermann, and she's joined also by Nabila Ramdani, a French-Algerian journalist and broadcaster. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Good morning Emma. Emma. Um, so, Florence, based in Paris, could you just tell us exactly where we are at the end of last night when the results came in? Everything looked very, very wobbly for, for, for Macron. Yes, certainly. I mean, it seems that uh, he could, uh, again, just the first round, so you had to to wait for the second one, he could lose his uh, absolute majority. Uh, And uh, what is uh, spectacular is the success of the left, left, this uh, new alliance led by uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, uh, who uh, is uh, really um, reaching nearly the same level in uh, the percentage of votes. Uh, It has to be translated in seeds, so uh, still, they are credited with less uh, seats, and it seems they, they won't reach the absolute majority they wanted. And Jean-Luc Mélenchon has based uh, the campaign on uh, this uh, motto, uh, choose me as prime minister. Uh, it, it seems still really difficult, but but Macron has a huge challenge on the left. He does, doesn't he, uh, Nabila? I, I was very surprised when the results came through last night. Yes, indeed. But it has to be noted that the shocking figure in all this is the turnout, of course. The turnout rate was shockingly low. And and there I say a challenge to French democracy, the fact that less than half eligible voters could be bothered turning up is very telling indeed. And let's not forget that these are not elections uh, like local elections, but parliamentary elections to elect MPs. So they are effectively the equivalent of um, electing MPs in the House of Commons uh, here in Britain. But yes, indeed, a huge challenge uh, by the left, a coalition of uh, a leftist coalition of five parties called uh, NUPS, which stand for New Popular Ecological uh, and Social Union. And uh, they effectively came um, uh, neck and neck uh, with the president's uh, uh, coalition called Ensemble Together. They are both around 25% of the vote, according to uh, the projections. Uh, Yet, this will translate as far more seats for Macron's coalition than uh, Mélenchon. So that is around... 255 to 295 seats for for Macron, but only uh, 150 to 190 for the Mélenchon coalition. And this is because it is not a system based on proportional representation, but a system that depends on the size of the constituencies and the way uh, that they are uh, arranged. So a full majority in the 577-seat parliament is, as you said, Emma, 289. So Macron might struggle to reach that figure, but according to these uh, polls, Mélenchon has no hope of winning a majority. But despite all this, um, Mélenchon appeared very upbeat last night and he said that the presidential uh, party is defeated and on the run. And, and that, of course, is, is hyperbole. But we'll, getting a lot, we'll be getting a lot more of that over the next week. I'm uh, sure. We'll lead up to the second round, which is obviously far more important. I'm sure we will. We have this, we have this incredibly powerful figure of Jean-Luc Mélenchon, don't we? He, he's, he has, um, he's very forceful to watch. And one wonders just how much of an enormous challenge Macron now faces in the second round, Florence. Because were Mélenchon to get the influence and the power that he says he intends to get, this could really derail a lot of Macron's plans. Yes, whatever happens, you know, even if uh, Macron retains uh, his majority, uh, well, of course, it will put him in a position to, to pass uh, the, the laws that he wants to, to enforce, like, for example, postponing retirement age uh, and, and so on. But uh, the, the uh, and France and Baud, like the, the party of Mélenchon, has been very, very uh, vocal and uh, made kind of an abstraction in the parliament with uh, some uh, 17, 20 uh, MPs. So you imagine like this alliance of more than 100 MPs can 
really, really make it very, very difficult for Macron. Uh, they can, you know, uh, block, obstruct, they can, you know, they can really change uh, the game in Parliament. And this is exactly what Macron fears. So it's clear, like, from a few days, and this will be coming in, in the next week, that Macron is, is really insisting on, on the destabilization that voting for the, the left alliance could provoke and is really making his best to, to present uh, Mélenchon as a danger for democracy uh, because he, he, he supported at one point Putin. You know, this is what he, he always uh, mentioned in his, uh, in his talks. And the Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne also uh, took stand to say, don't vote for these people. They are, you know, they, they are presented as a danger they are even caricatured as wanting to leave EU, wanting to leave NATO. Of course, it's a bit more complicated uh, than that. But this will really be uh, the, the main uh, talk on Macron's side this week to say, don't do this, don't, don't give power to, to these people. Even, as I said, if they don't get the majority, they still will have a, a real uh, power of influence in, uh, in Parliament. Tell us a little bit about what yesterday's uh, result, Nabina, suggests about the, the, the longer term structure and, and, and map of French politics. When we had the presidential elections, it seemed as if France's pr- traditional left and right had been splintered into lots and lots of different factions. The fact is that the centre right and the left have 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 pulled together to to face each other. And it seems like there's a more sort of a natural realignment of the French political system again. Well, um, I would uh, qualify some of Florence's comment and and react to to your uh, query, Emma. I think it looks very likely that Emmanuel Macron will get his majority or very close to it. Uh, Remember that the whole point of his coalition, which is called Together, is that he's already working with other parties. So all he has to do is work work with a few more. And this is what Emmanuel Macron has always done. He's not really a party man. He's a highly pragmatic independent who thinks he can work with everybody except the extremes. And I suspect that if his coalition falls a few shorts of the magic 289 seat majority, then he'll be working with the Gaullist Republicans, which won't be a huge problem for him. Uh, They are projected to win between 50 uh, to 80 seats. 80 seats in, in, in Parliament. And I think another important point in, in, in this discussion is the way that the, um, uh, the institution of the presidency and indeed of Parliament works. And Macron has already displayed a hard-headed willingness to bypass Parliament completely and bring in decrees. Uh, he did that in bringing decrees supporting businesses over workers, for example, tough legislation, uh, making it easier for employers to sack employees, was rushed uh, through uh, by decree in his first uh, mandate. I think another important constitutional point to remember in this discussion is that the institution of the French president is one of the most powerful positions uh, on earth. And when Charles de Gaulle created the Fifth Republic in 1958, he valued stability and centralized power over anything else, not least of all because France was on the verge of civil war with its Algerian uh, colonies. So in many ways, the modern presidency is a crisis presidency designed to get things done and not to worry too much about extending democracy. The idea is to get the head of state, uh, you know, to get his simple majority and authorize him to rule uh, for five years. So there is an argument that the whole concept of parliamentary election only really means anything in times of what's called cohabitation, when the president gets no majority and the prime minister with a completely different ideology is uh, thrust upon him. And this has only happened twice in France. Uh, The first time with François Mitterrand in the 1980s and then with Jacques Chirac in the 1990s. So I I would really be astonished if we are looking at a period of cohabitation starting this time next week, least of all with a former Trotskyite like Mélenchon turning up at cabinet meetings. Nabila Ramdani and Florence Biederman, thank you both for joining us on Monocle 24.